Mark chapter 16, verse 19. Remember last week, or verse uh, 14, I mentioned that little asterisk right there, and Jesus gets on to the disciples, then he tells them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And that word go is the aorist tense in the imperative mode, which means do it with haste. This means to proceed without delay. So I'm encouraging all of you to be soul winners without delay. Yes. Say, Pastor, I'm not ready. Do it anyway. Right. Pastor, I'm not where I need to be with the Lord. We'll get right and do it anyway. Amen. Pastor, I'm too young. Do it anyway. Pastor, I'm too old. Do it anyway. Right. Share the gospel with somebody. Yes. Hallelujah. That'll keep you on track. That'll keep things moving in your life. And you'll believe God to do big things. Hallelujah. So to be habitually in a state of moving forward because God has some things scheduled for you. And as you become a soul winner, the schedule will start to develop. Now, I need to read what I'm supposed to read. Over at verse 19, you'll find another asterisk. Raise your hand if you found it. Raise your hand if you have a Bible and that asterisk is by verse 19. That means he's... He's already given you a direction and instruction. And now he's changing. He's changing gears. All right? So that after the Lord had spoken unto them, was received up into heaven. Jesus was received up into heaven. This is Acts chapter 1 material. He was received up into heaven and set on the right hand of God. That's the seat of power. In the book of uh, Proverbs, when it talks about one on the right hand and one on the left hand, it's the seat of power. The, the right hand is the seat of power. Say that, the seat of power. The seat of power. Jesus is seated on the right hand of the Father. <clears throat> He's more than just uh, your attorney now. He has full authority. He has the Father's full authority. Say the Father's Father's full authority. authority. Because he said, all power is given unto me both in heaven and in earth. We receive full authority by Jesus. Listen to what it says. Listen to what it says next verse. And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them. The word them in your Bible, if you have a King James Bible, you could scratch through that word. It says, the Lord working with and confirming the word with signs following. Then he says, amen, Kyle. Pastor Ned, he says, amen. That means so let it be. When you say amen to something, you go, let it happen. Let it become. Now, let me read out of the uh, Passion Translation just for a moment. Verse 19, after saying these things, Jesus was lifted up into heaven and sat down at the place of honor at the right hand of God. And the apostles, or the disciples, went out announcing the good news everywhere as the Lord himself consistently worked with them validating the message they preached. The Lord validates what you say. Pastor John preached Wednesday, my goodness. If you were here, you got something. Validating the message they preached with miracle signs that accompanied them. Hang on, I'm going to give you another Another translation. Afterwards he appeared. No, it's a different one. Verse 19. So the Lord Jesus, after he had spoken to them, was taken up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. And they went out and preached everywhere while the Lord kept working with them and confirming the message by testing signs and miracles that closely accompanied it. When you preach the word, the Lord will work with you. 
How does he work with you? Because the the verse before said he was called up to heaven. How does he work with you? He works with you by the Holy Ghost in you. Hallelujah. That's why it's important for you to receive the Holy Ghost and speaking in other tongues. You say, well, Pastor, I don't believe in speaking in tongues. That's why you need to receive the Holy Ghost and speaking in other tongues. Because anytime you don't believe what's in the Word of God, that's a sure sign the devil doesn't want you to get it. I can preach right by myself, whether you amen me or not. Hey, hallelujah. I learned that. I don't know about you, those of you that teach and preach, prophesy. I'm sure y'all do it at home by yourself. Sometimes when, when Natalie goes shopping or something or goes, just goes out on some adventure with Kim or whatever, it's like Lord Jesus. But, but I, I'll be home. I just preach down the hallway. I mean, I'm letting it rip. Glory to God. I mean, the dogs, they get in the other room, kind of get out of the way. Hey, hallelujah. Just praising God, preaching, laughing, rejoicing. Hallelujah. Be full of joy. Be believing God. Be just trusting God and come to church. And it's like, why don't y'all get as happy as I was getting? Get a hold of it. Let me, let me give you one more translation. Okay. Maybe. Maybe not. All right. All right, let me come back here. Here we go. One more, then we'll, we'll, we'll go on. Um, here we go. When the Lord Jesus finished talking with them, he was taken up into heaven. That's why you need to understand Jesus said, I'll send you another comforter. He went to heaven. He said, I won't leave you comfortless. I'll send another comforter. That's the Holy Ghost. In Acts chapter 1, verse 8, Jesus said, I'm leaving, but after I leave, after you receive, after I leave and after you receive, after you receive the Holy Ghost, you will be witnesses unto me. Listen, we need to be witnesses today in today's generation and today's world. You need to be witnesses about the goodness of God in the land of the living. And you really need to be a witness today because we're living in such an evil world, such a wicked world, that's, that politicians are, are being voted in without our consent that oppose the will of God. That's why it's so important for you to get out and vote. See, Pastor, I'm just one vote. Yeah, but if 80 million people say that, it starts to carry weight. Do you know that in a city of 60,000 people that our mayor is usually elected by two or 3,000 votes? Mayor in Omaha is elected, I don't know, does anybody know? 12,000 votes, half a million people. We need to pay attention to that. Don't be silent when you can go color the boxes and have a voice. Don't be silent when they talk. Well, everybody just has their own way of believing. That's a chicken way out. That's a chicken way out. I'm telling you right now. And what I believe, it doesn't have anything to do with black, white, or brown, or any of that kind of business. See, Pastor, are you you prejudiced? I'm prejudiced against evil. I'm prejudiced against the devil. I'm prejudiced against stupid people. I'm prejudiced against anything that's against the will of God. You know, I believe in, in a traditional marriage, man and a woman. I'm so glad you're a woman. Woo, hallelujah. So glad. <laughs> Thank you. She just called me a man. Praise God. I'm excited about that. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm enjoy your company. Glory to God. She told me something uh, this morning. She goes, hey, listen to this. She told me. She gave it to me. She listened to this. She said, a guy's telling his wife, he said, I, I apologize for pushing all your buttons. And she kind of looked at him and smiled. I go, thank you. He said, I was looking for the mute button. 
<laughs> she gave it to me. Thank you, baby. <laughs> I said, I'm going to use that. She, no, you can't use it. I said, you just gave it to me. I can't unhear that. That's how my brain works. Mm. Hallelujah. And the disciples went everywhere and preached. Listen to this. When I say this, I'm going to teach you how to amen or to shout. When I say this, if it hits your spirit, respond. And the disciples, who's a disciple? A Jesus follower. Are you a disciple? Yes. Pastor, I'm a, I'm a Christian. That's not what I ask you. That's not what I ask you. Not what I ask you. Because we know a lot of people call themselves Christians do not know Jesus. Do not know the sacrifice he made. Don't call yourself a Christian if you haven't got a hold of the idea that Jesus suffered tremendously for your salvation. So, Pastor, I, 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 just, I just want to go to church and I want to make any waves. Make some waves! Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Pastor, I just want to sit in the background and be a nobody. Mm -mm. I go places and my wife will sit. She said, don't stir it up. Or she'll say something like, here he goes, here just stirring the pot. I'm going, thank you. <laughs> and his disciples went everywhere. That's, that's you. You say, Pastor, I, I went to church today to get something. You came to church to hear marching orders. Yes, sir. You came to church to hear what your orders are as you serve in the army of the king. You came to hear instructions about how to take the enemy territory. You came to hear directions on how you can pull down the walls of Jericho that are around your life. You come to hear how, uh, Pastor, I've marched around the wall three times, but I had to leave church early. What, what was the rest of the sermon? The part you needed to hear. You can't hear just the three times you marched when you need to hear the seven times. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. All right, I'm, I'm getting to it. The disciples went everywhere and preached, and the Lord worked through them, Amen. confirming what they said by many miraculous works. Yes. And the Lord worked through them, confirming what they said. Okay, we got to get this. The Lord can only work through you and confirm what you say. If you don't say it, he can't confirm it. And say, well, I'm, I'm looking for a miracle. Well, did you say it? Because he can't confirm what you didn't say. But if you will say, miracle happen, the Bible says he will work through you and confirm what you say with attesting signs and miracles. One translation Confirming the word you say with signs following believers. Hallelujah. Somebody need to get happy about hearing the light shine on why we don't see more miracles. Because we've been too pansied. Too quiet. One church, a pastor told me there's another church in Omaha. They didn't pray for the sick because they didn't want to risk them not being healed. Listen, I'll pray for the sick and risk being a fool for Christ's sake because he does the healing, but he can't do the healing if I won't talk about it, if I won't say about it, but he can only work through Pastor Dave when Pastor Dave says what the word says, then he can come on the scene and confirm what I say with signs following what I said. Listen, listen, I don't care how bad your home is 
If you'll get a hold of the word of God and start saying in faith what God wants you to say, he'll back his word up. No word, the Bible says, no word of God is void of power. Woo, Isaiah 55. My Jesus, somebody help me preach today. Holy Ghost is pulling this out of me. When you, he'll confirm Jesus, Jesus. I'm glad y'all sang about Jesus today. Woo, hallelujah. Back in the 80s, a lot of gospel singing was not much different than country western singing. You know, country western singing, you know, I lost my wife, lost my dog, lost my house trailer, lost my truck. They're more grieved about the dog and the truck. They'd sing three verses about all that stuff. And the gospel singing wasn't a whole lot different. I've been through many tragedies and sorrows. I have no hope because I'm broke. Praise the Lord. Oh my God. <laughs> I claim all the rights to this song. They had, to get out of, they had to get out of that. They had to get out of that. Country music tells you about everything you lost. Gospel music ought to tell you about everything you got. How to get it. How to keep it. How to walk it out. Praise God. But you can't walk it out if you don't talk it out. Confess the word. He'll confirm his covenant. What is his covenant? Words said that define what's outlined in it. Just like that, that dissolution of marriage, he outlines all these things. They tell you about dividing assets. Get a hold of this. Tell the devil, you can keep the lack, you can keep the sickness, you can keep the cancer, you can keep the broke, you can keep the pain, you can keep the hurt. And the judge says, okay, then you get the peace, you get the help, you get the healing, you get the money, you get the blessing. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, praise God. And it's just like every divorce, somebody's always complaining, well, I had to pay this much. That's what we want the devil to have to say. He made me pay it all. He made me pay it back. He made me give it back. What I stole from them, God made me return it seven times over. Hallelujah. What the devil took from me, God made him pay it back with interest. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. What the Lord, the devil took my marriage. Yeah, but he, the Lord gonna give me a better, and he gave me a better one, hallelujah. Praise God. I told my wife last night, listen, I told. A lot of guys, you try to have that stoic, he-man, stupid look, you know. Well, she knows how I feel. I've known couples before, they told their, one guy said he told his wife that he loved her when they got married, yeah. or when he got married, never told her again. Aww. He said, because it never changed my mind. Oh, my. <laughs> I, I, I think yesterday and maybe today, I said, I'm so glad you're a good wife to me. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I'm putting it out there. I'm letting her know that I appreciate that. And I'm also prophesying my future. Because if I want it to be good, I got to keep talking it good. And I got to talk it good before it's good. Amen. I'm going, honey, do you need some money? You'd be surprised how fast she is. <laughs> She's a black belt with speed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't have to preach to her now. You got to take it, honey. No, no problem. I, no, uh -uh. I like, can I have my hand back? Like, yeah. <laughs> that's how you need to be about the Word of God. That's right. amen. When you hear the Word, that's why I'm teaching you about how to say Amen, how to give a shout out or something. When you hear, when you hear the Word and it hits your spirit, Stacy, it hits that that inner man, that inner witness. And, and the, you know this, the Bible says that our spirit will agree with their spirit. And so when we join, we join our words with what we're saying. 
we, we agree and we say, amen. What does that mean? That means let that be. Let it occur. Let it take place. Let it happen just like we just said. Let it happen like we just said. Let it happen like we just said. What, what are you saying, Pastor Dave? I want it to happen. Woo! And the disciples went everywhere. That's me. And preached. That's me. And the Lord, you say, well, I'm not a preacher. Are you proclaiming? Are you telling the good news to somebody? Pastor, I want you to pray. There's this guy on the job. And uh, boy, he's, he's going through a really hard time. And you pray for him. Are you praying for him? I'm not raising a church of wimps. Amen. I'm going to get me one of those little wolf bats Are you getting this? I've been working all week, praying all week, and I'm preaching my heart out. Are you getting this? Come on. I'm going to knock this stupid out of you. Jesus. We don't give you a knife while I'm preaching. Uh-uh. Remember Dale Craig said on the front one day, I said, did you get anything? He said, it's like you had a wolf bat. And you just kept beating me the whole service. Yeah, I got something out of it. Whew. The disciples went everywhere. There needs to be some go in our church. Can I, can I preach to you a minute, church? I love you. I, I do. Oftentimes, we got too much slow on our go. Don't wait. Don't, don't come to me unless you talk to the Lord first, Pastor. You come to me and say, Pastor, would you agree with me for, for help or healing or eye-opening? this guy at work or this woman at work don't, don't come to me and want me to do the praying for you that's right. I'm teaching yeah. you how to do it on, the Lord can only work through you if, if that's your assignment if they're your assignment if that job's your assignment if you're to be a light in that place if that's where God put you and you're supposed to be preaching everywhere which means there yep. he can only work through what you say right. if your assignment is there God's put the there on you, you can only, he can only work through you and you're there. That's right. But if you'll say it, he'll confirm it. He'll back it up. How do you know that? They'll come in one day and say, man, I asked you to pray yesterday and life's different today. Amen. Well, that's how it works. Yes. Praise God. And, and you might say, well, Pastor, I, I get it. And Pastor John mentioned this the other day. Pastor, I took it. You might say, and, and, and there's part of you might say, well, that feeling's not there yet, but I took it. I'm in faith about it. And you might say the, the feeling. <clears throat> feeling is based on, you know, your, your senses, your, your five senses, how it looks, how it sounds, how it feels, touch, all this stuff. And, and that's the soulless realm. You know, we are a spirit. We have a soul. and We live in a body. And the body can affect the soulish emotions, you know. Uh, uh, nobody likes to be sick. Right. Nobody likes to be sick. And if you think being sick glorifies God, don't take medicine. Be sick and be happy. <clears throat> but, it, but if you trust God, what you feel, you'll start to walk in that spirit realm. Yeah. You'll start to feed your spirit. Because if you feed, if you feed your emotions... Bad music, yep, trash music, get, on, get online, watch stuff you shouldn't watch, listen to stuff you shouldn't listen to, and now you feed your spirit all that. Then you're, you're, it'll suffer, but if you feed your spirit the word of God, you'll start to be strong and you'll start to stand up tall. Amen. You'll, start, you'll be a defender of the faith. Learn to be a defender of the faith. The Lord will work through you, confirming what you say by many miraculous signs. <clears throat> I'm going to quit.
sometime today. <clears throat> I don't say what I was going to quit. Right. Now, some of you had your hopes up. No, no. Hang in here with me a little bit. We're winding down. We're landing the plane. Uh, but sometimes it circles the runway. <laughs> Azusa Street, years ago, people would come from all over the world to go to this Azusa Street, Los Angeles, California. Great revival. Great revival. Uh, the pastor was a black man named William Seymour. There was no prejudice there. All colors, all kinds, all nations were coming. People would get off the train station and be a half a mile away. Azusa Street was an old horse barn. They scraped manure off the walls. And it got so full of people, they said the walls would start to kind of bow out a little bit. But that, that's what they had available. And so uh, they said people would get within a half a mile of, of the building and start falling out. The power of the Holy Ghost was emanating. The anointing was flowing out. <clears throat> and I've got one of the books. They told me their stories of people that were children back then. This was around the turn of the century. So there was powerful things taking place. They, they'd bring people on stretchers that were almost dead. They'd get up and walk out. And uh, this, this guy went and talked to the people. They were in rest homes or had a home, and they were in their 80s, some in their 90s. Closer I get, that doesn't look too bad. Right. <laughs> but this one, one girl I was reading about, and the interviewer said, did you see many miracles take place? I said, oh, yes. I said, all the time. I said, I was only a little girl. <clears throat> so one of the things I noticed said, the anointing would get so heavy, there would be a cloud, and the children would play hide and go seat in the cloud. I said it would be two or three feet off the floor. And, and the interviewer said, uh, did you see a lot of miracles? I said, oh, thousands. I said, did you have many miracles happen when you prayed for people? She said, oh, yes, but not near as many as some of the other kids. Kids, hear me. Children are going to be raised up in this last day. You might think they're little hellions at home. When they come to the house of God, they're going to be mightily used of God. They're going to be little prophets. Amen. And he said, well, how many miracles did you see? She said, oh, not, not that many. He said, I only had about 3,000 or so. <laughs> said, some had way more than that. Because people just kept coming. It was, it was a constant flow for two or three years. Thousands. They told me their story. That's the name of the book. You can, you can look it up. You can get it. You can't have mine. But. I'm just telling you this. They said something. You can't, you can't be, well, I'm a Christian, but I just keep it to myself. And you're not a Christian. Because if he's in you, you've got to tell about him. You can't keep it still. You've got to tell about him. You've got to talk about him. You've got to tell what he did for you. See, Pastor, I don't know what I'd say. Just say, hey, can I tell you what Jesus did in my life? I was going nowhere quick, but he put me on the fast track to somewhere. Amen. Hallelujah. I didn't have anything going on in my life, but he got a hold of me and made me a somebody. And if he did it for me, he can do it for you. Can I pray for you? Hallelujah. That's like you want to go up to somebody. Can I, can I pray a financial blessing on you? Unless they're extremely stupid. <laughs> can I pray for you to have a healthy life can I pray for your family to be blessed can I pray you see what the devil does he doesn't know he creates an opening for us to tell somebody about Jesus if he's tearing up their marriage say could I pray for you for God to do a miracle in your marriage if it looks like everything's going downhill can I pray for you that everything will start going uphill hallelujah Amen. praise God